Great. Okay, welcome everyone. Um, we have Kelly Steiner here from uh, the McGraw-Hill Wonders team, and tonight's topic is getting the best use out of the Reading Writing Companion. I'm Susan Henry, and although um, I'll, although many of you might be watching this, and it would pertain to many of you, um, we're kind of going with that younger kids K-1-2 focus uh, for the little hands that possibly can't do as much writing, so how to really get the best use of that reading writing companion. So Kelly, thanks for being here and you can go ahead and take that away. Okay, thanks so much. I'm happy to be here and excited to just look at the reading writing companion and give you some suggestions. I taught first grade for a very, very long time. So I always look at trainings from how I would use the program and how I do it as a teacher. And so hopefully this will give you some, um, some help uh, just to get going in that reading writing companion, because I know it's very uh, rigorous and it's uh, something that we need to teach our kids. So we're going to look today, we have the record button, Sarah, these are all for you, <laughs> but there's some uh, norms for the day. And I'll just leave those up for a moment just for the recording. And I think the real success criteria is the important piece here that students will be writing them the reading writing companions daily. So that's a nice piece that we just, and that doesn't mean full everything done, but really getting them into it because we're building that foundation for our students to be successful in upper grades in that reading writing companion. So we're going to look at the reading writing companion K12. There are a few slides in here that will take a look at the older grades and I'll comment, but we're really focusing in on that K2 today. So that essential question and that graphic organizer in your reading writing companion are a great place to start working with your students uh, with the writing because you're building that vocabulary. That essential question is a great way to have students start talking about what that essential question means to them. The, the piece that really helps is when they're talking about that essential question, they're hearing each other talk about their experiences. So that talking in K-1-2 is probably the very most important. I always say if they can talk about it, they can write about it or get an attempt at writing about it. And so having kids talk about that essential question, listening to their peers, because in this case, technology may affect some kids' life very differently than other kids, and they need to hear that from everybody. And then that uh, graphic organizer that's in your presentation. So the way I would do this is I would have that graphic organizer on the screen in my presentation, and I would be soliciting kids' responses because we want them doing the talking, not us doing the telling. So we want them bringing things up after their conversations. And now we can model and we can do an interactive graphic organizer so that we're taking students in uh, information that they're sharing and putting it in the graphic organizer and then having kids pick several of the different pieces of that graphic organizer and fill in their own. So as uh, when I was teaching first grade, I would have, I, we would do our lists have them interactively make graphic organizers or their suggestions. And then we would go back over it, read through it again together. And then what I would say is, okay, now pick four things or three things that you wanna put on your organizer that you can read. And so we'd read through them several times so that they, those kiddos that were lower readers could at least pick and choose and then put those on their graphic organizer. So it's a nice way to get them started writing and building that graphic organizer. And this, it's gonna start out, if you haven't been doing that, it's going to be something you're going to model and model and model and model with them. And then you're going to interactively do this together with them until they get that down. This is important because as they're going through the wonders, their wonders career, K through five, this is going to be something they do every single year. It's not something that they just do in K-1, they do this every single year. So 
great way to start that time um, that time with their writing is fill out the graphic organizer. Uh, this gives them that also, and that we have to talk about this because our little guys don't realize this, but they can go back and use that graphic organizer as they're going through the other pages of their reading writing companion. So this is, we're building tools for them to look back on, kind of building a portfolio for our students to be able to use and access to help work through the other parts of the reading writing companion. This is an upper grades. No, nope, I'm sorry. This is a kindergarten where it's going to be our first grade, where it is going to be talking about building that knowledge uh, with that essential question, those collaborative conversations. And remember, anything in green like this is a um, is one of the instructional routines found in the instructional routines handbook. So if you're not comfortable with that collaborative conversation routine, definitely go back into the instructional routines handbook and take a look at the routine. Because again, this is one that starts in kindergarten and it builds all the way through fifth grade, actually builds all the way through our high school program. So, and the other thing to really pay attention to, and I don't think we always do as teachers, but these EL supports, are really strong supports necessary for our EL kids, but they are great supports for all our students. And so read through these, because if you have kiddos that are struggling to get words down, these may be some supports, another scaffold for you to help kids be able to access that and to get that uh, writing down in their reading writing companion. So just, one of those things and that um, and one of the uh, in the English language uh, teachers guide and it's a separate guide that is an amazing guide that will help you through their shared read and through the um, anchor text because there's some wonderful scaffolds in there that will help and they're not they're scaffolds for EL learners but boy our K12 kiddos kiddos are English language learners so it's a great way to um, get some other suggestions to hit the needs of our kids so as we're building that vocabulary, that's going to be added into our graphic organizer. You're going to see, like I said, there's that collaborative conversation. So important to be using those, um, those routines that students are going to see every single year. We just, I always call it a vessel to put new content in. They learn the routine. They don't have to learn a new routine every year. They just have to learn the new content. So it's a really nice way to have our kids uh, using similar information through every grade level. And remember, K-1-2, we're building that strong foundation for them. Especially in K-1, a second grade, they start doing a little bit more on their own. By the end of first grade, they should be doing quite a bit by on their own or in pairs. This, this is an interactive work text. And so it's really hard to have a conversation by yourself. So we always want kids talking together or in small groups, however you're pairing or grouping your kids, that talk is always the very most important first step. And then we're going to use our graphic organizer. That close reading routine, and I cannot stress this enough, I go back in and uh, do initial uh, you know, follow-up trainings, and this close reading routine, there's two things and wonders if you get them down, you are going to be very successful, especially the first year. If you go through and you understand what the core pathway is, which is your shared read, well, your interactive work and your interactive read aloud, your shared read, your anchor text, your paired selection. Those are your four core pathway pieces. And the other thing you have to learn and understand well is this close reading routine. So that close reading routine, as you know, because you've been using wonders, is repeated every single piece of text that I'm going to use. I'm going to always start out with a read of the text. I can read it to them the first time through and then go back and focus in on most, it's not all, because there are too many read questions. There are way too many read questions in, the, um, in your teacher's edition. I'm going to use my student outcomes page to refer back to 
to see what are the most important questions to ask based on those little red check marks that are in your um, student outcomes page. What are the most important parts to ask the questions? So then I'm going to go back, we're going to have them read it or we're gonna read it together. And then I'm going to focus in on some of the red read questions. Those are DOK ones and two. I, I always call those kind of the old fashioned read and ask some questions because I've been in this business a long time. That's what we used to do and that's all we did. But then we wanna dig down into DOK or depth of knowledge twos and threes. So we're going to go and use, and in K1, you have it broken out day by day. Second grade is a little bit different in other grade levels because you have your day one, day two pretty broken out. But after that, then it gets a little messy for you. But you are going to then focus in on your rereads, not going to look at the red reads then. I'm only going to look at the green rereads. And those are deeper depth of knowledge levels, twos and threes, looking for text evidence, analyzing text, those little mini lessons go along with the rereads. And so we really want kids to dig deeper into the text, never rereading the entire text. In your teacher's edition, it will say, read, reread paragraph or page, and that's all we're focusing in on. So we're not focusing in on rereading everything. And then that last piece, and this is that, if you've got the close reading routine down, you're going to get this too. Uh, that integrate is we want to take everything they've learned throughout the week for K-1 or two weeks for second grade, and we want to transfer that to something new because if they can transfer it, then they've got it. And those are depth and knowledge threes and fours. And so the importance of those depth and knowledge levels is as our kiddos get into third grade and have to take those high stakes tests, all high stakes tests are written at threes and fours, no matter what state we're in. And so this is, it's our, our uh, purpose and our um, goal to get kids to be able to transfer that knowledge. And so looking at their, the shared read, looking at the anchor text, and then into the paired selection, I'm going to repeat this close reading routine and it doesn't matter what grade level, we started in kindergarten and we keep it going all the way through high school actually, because this close reading routine is so important. And this is written by Dr. Doug Fisher, who is, he's one of my educational heroes. He's a guru of close reading. And so he has, he uses this with his students. So it's tried and true, research-based, most importantly, evidence-based for our kids. So even in upper grades, we're going to start into that shared read. With second grade, there's opportunity for kids to write. I can do a lot of modeling by putting those pages there in my presentation up on my screen in my presentation as kids are in their print. So we're going to do a lot of modeling, having kids interactively do it again, adding things to the um, to the notes or to the uh, graphic organizers so that kids are really involved in what's going on, part of the learning process. The more we talk, the less kids are learning. So it's whoever, whoever's doing the talking is doing the learning. So we really want our kids to be talking, interacting, um, even if they only get, I know as K-1 kiddos, if they can get a couple of the sounds down, if they're not if they're not getting that blending down yet, but can get out the beginning sound and an ending sound, that's where they're starting. This is building that foundation for them. It will progress and it really does progress. It's amazing what kids can do when we set that expectation higher than we normally would. I'd much rather have my kiddos try to reach that expectation that I help them and scaffold that for them than being able to do everything on their own because they're not learning then. So that close reading routine, like I said, Core pathway, close reading routine. Those are the, your first year. Those are the absolute most important parts of Wonders to Learn. 
There's on page 88, if you haven't as a team or as a teacher gone in and read that close reading routine, I really, really encourage you to spend some time in there. It's, a, it's the foundation of wonders. So let's look at that shared read. So that shared read is a teach and model. That means they're not doing this on their own. I am modeling it. I am teaching it with them. I am having them interact with it. There is space on the side, on the margins for kids to draw pictures, to start labeling things, to start writing sentences. I know as a first grade teacher, I had kiddos that could start putting sentences and words, and were they completely spelled right? No, but they were getting that sentence pathway down. And so just working on that, they have to learn how to write a sentence to be able to write a sentence. It's just not something innate in them. We have to teach that. And the program does that. And so using that shared read for day one and day two, no matter what grade level you're in, is going to really help support our students to be able to access that anchor text. And so same thing in upper grades, your shared read, you're looking at that, um, whether it's second grade or fourth grade, you're still doing that shared read with the read, then the reread. Day one are the reads, day two are the, are the rereads. As we get into that, here's that writing that sentence, we want kids in K-1-2 to know what a good sentence looks like. And so in your green pages, and you can see it at the top of your reading writing companion, you can see the green pages, we're going to work on how to write a sentence. They updated this from 2020 to 2023, and we were so excited because the big complaint of, from teachers was, well, how do you expect them to write when we haven't even taught them how to write a sentence? It's a good point. And so using the, how do we write a good sentence? We want them to talk. We want them to listen to the sentence. We want them to underline what's the topic of this sentence. Then we want them to stretch those sounds. So walking through each step of this, this will help them to be able to start writing sentences, cohesive sentences that make some sense because they don't always make sense when they're in K-1 and some second graders. So then you look at that talk site, right? Uh, we're asking kids to talk. We're asking them to write a sentence. When they talk about it first and then remember what they talked about or remembered what their partner or group talked about, then they can start writing those sentences. So again, going back to if they can talk about it, they can attempt to write about it. And so having kids go through and start writing this, I'm going to model it. If I haven't been modeling first, I'm going to start modeling first. Then we're going to do it interactively. And then again, an interactive work text is not meant to be done alone necessarily. So we want kids to start doing this together. And so working as a pair, working as a team, uh, as a group, start getting those sentences down. In this case, about something they like to do at school. Then you have your mini lessons in your shared read. This is another way to build that graphic organizer. We're looking at characters and what happened here. And so characters and setting or, or problem. And so we're asking kids to do this. Again, I'm going to put that graphic organizer on my screen. We're going to have kids turn and talk about it. We're going to have them reread like the directions say, share how they, why they know this is realistic fiction, and then start filling out the chart together, two characters, and what each, something they each could do that happened in real life. So that's helping kids learn that kind of, uh, what that kind of fiction is, that realistic fiction. Upper grades, same thing. How do we get kids to be able to respond to reading? This is the most difficult thing, I think, in the program. The responding to the shared read and the responding to the anchor text, but it's the most important. That is our goal, is to get them to be able to respond in more than one sentence. <laughs> but 
That's why we're building that foundation in K-1-2 to help those kiddos be able to um, access this and to be able to respond to this text. The first year is tough. Everybody is learning a new way to do the writing about reading is very rigorous. And so we're building that. Just think as a second grade teacher, Sarah, next year, your kids have had it a year. If we're all doing this as teachers and we're supporting our students, they're going to be much more comfortable the next year going out and working together to respond to that reading. But we've got to build that foundation in K-1 or it's never going to come. So that's really important. So using your quick tips, using your readers to writers, then in K-1 and the close reading routine or the routine is a little bit different in kindergarten to first grade, but in day three, we're doing, it says reread, but we're going to, in first grade, read the anchor text. And you'll notice on the screen, there are reads and rereads on the same page. But the first time through, I'm only going to focus in on some of the read reads. Going back to that student outcomes page, which ones are the most important? Then I'm going to go back to the beginning of the text, still on day three, and now I'm only going to focus in on the green rereads. This is the same in second grade. Day three, I'm going to do half of my reads. Day four, I'm going to finish up those reads. Not all of them, there are too many. The program was built for flexibility, for the meeting the needs of your students. Day four, so I'm going to finish those red reads. Day five, I'm going to go back to the beginning of the text. This is in fifth, second through fifth. I'm going to only focus in on the green rereads halfway through. Day six, I'm going to finish the green rereads. That breaks it up a little bit so that you're, and you're never focusing in on the red reads and the green reads at the same time. Because remember that red read is very surfacey level. So thinking about how am I going to go through the red reads, then start over, whether it's in K-1 on the same day, and kindergarten has the same day often. They have red reads and green rereads in the same day. You go through it once, go back to the top text, and then focus in on the green rereads. Day three in first grade, you're doing the, uh, the uh, mini lessons. And this would happen in day five and six in second grade or uh, upper grades, because those uh, the mini lessons are only wrapped around the rereads, the green rereads. So again, this is a talk site write routine, whether it's in kindergarten or uh, second or third grade, it is a talk write in lower grades, but it's still the talk and we're citing text evidence. We're having kids go back in and find that text evidence. So we want them to talk about it, cite that text evidence, and then write about it. If you haven't been doing this with them and modeling and scaffolding, we want to make sure that you're doing this right alongside with them and gradually release those scaffolds to help them be more successful. We're citing that text evidence, it's right there. So as teachers, sometimes we forget kids don't understand what these charts are made for, so we've got to teach them. I'm going to use what does Matt do and how does he feel? So I'm going to use that information that we've done together or found together to help write my sentence. So really step by step by stepping it. And as we go second through fifth, same thing, your day five and six, that's when you're digging into those uh, mini lessons for, um, for the rereads. Day three and four in kindergarten, first grade, is writing about the anchor text. Again, you're talking about it first, and then 
modeling this for them. And I always tell teachers, we model and model and model, and we think we've modeled enough. We model a little bit more, and then we gradually release that so that we're now we're doing interactive writing. So it's really supporting our students as they're learning to write about this text. And then that responding to reading, this is the difference between uh, responding to reading and writing about the anchor text is the difference between uh, K-1 and then second through fifth. So the responding to reading is still writing about the anchor text, but now it's in upper grades again. Because it's a new program, you're still going to model, you're still going to interactively write with this and help kids to be successful in this. Parents, uh, that parent communication, uh, if I know all kids have an account at Canyons, that school to home is where there is a um, letter that goes home that is editable. If you look at it before, if you go into your teacher side before it goes out. So in K-1, it's before, so it'd be on day five. If I go into that letter before day five, I can edit this. I can add anything I want in there. I can even add math stuff in there if I want. Have parents so that they're going into one place to look at what they're working on. There is always activities. There are comprehension checks and there are spelling lists. If you're using the spelling, those are all in the letters that go home. In second through fifth, I need to catch that before day 10. And there will be a, um, a button on the letter on the teacher side that will let you change or add things to it. So use that to your benefit. And then you also have, if you have kiddos that speak a different language at home, this little icon, because kids have access, oops, sorry about that, kids have access to their entire, I want to go back to the student side here quick, can't find my cursor, I have too many screens open, <laughs> there we go. Uh, so this, the student side, all of their text is available in their reads button. It's a great listening center for kids as well. But when you go into your the reads button, all of the text will have this little sheet icon. This is called a language summary. And I can hear that a summary of the story in, I think it's 11 different languages now, if it happens to be one of the languages your family speak. But it gives us a great home to school connection. It gives our kids an opportunity to hear it in their home language so then they could connect the English to it very easily. So just an idea or something, a reminder of that sheets icon is amazing. So got one minute left, Susan, I think. Um, kind of the thought for the end is. Thank you, Kelly. I just wanted to reiterate with any mm -hmm. participants. I've had a couple of questions about, sure. can we still use Foursquare with our respond to the reading? Mm -hmm. We used that in our previous um, basal edition uh, to support writing. And if you're wanting to do that, it, it's not it's not either or, it's it's whatever works for kids, what? yes. right? So if you respond to reading, you're wanting to fill out a Foursquare to be able to do that, that would be a, an additional scaffold that you put together. And so I'm just saying that for the masses um, because you are the professional and putting more scaffolds in um, is something that you're allowable to do. I mean, everyone's looking for that allowance and I'm not your boss, but I have to give you that allowance. <laughs> yes, and that's, yeah. that's one of those things you you are you know your kids best and i always tell teachers do not take off your teacher hat best practices are best practice no matter what you're using as resources your curriculum is that is the standards are your curriculum reaching those standards you've got all the resources you would ever need we're just taking away some of the hunting and gathering from you so that you can hunt and gather within the program. But if you have good strategies and good practices, don't give those up. Definitely. Thanks for, thanks for bringing that in. So Kelly, do you want to do your last um, 
to get out the door and then I'll turn off the recording. And if Sarah sure. or Cindy have any specific questions, they can ask those. Yeah. So the ticket out the door is basically what's an additional way for you that, uh, that you can get the best out of using the reading writing companion with your students. So thinking about what is it you could use if, if it's not being very successful, we throw a lot of stuff at you the first year, we know that, but what is an additional way that you may not have thought of as we went through everything today that you could use that reading writing companion more? Thanks, Kelly. I'm yeah. going to turn off the recording and then Sarah or Cindy, if you have any questions that you want to ask Kelly or myself. Yeah, great. Thank you.